summary for Basha 10. Basha 10 is your basic tent, very simple to build, very easy to construct. You should be able to do it with four people, definitely under 10 minutes. Without Basha 10, you have no shelter. No shelter, you get wet, you get cold. Then you will be set. Okay, Basha 10, let's go over the steps again. Get your equipment prepared and ready, and then you can start construction. First step, lay out your ground sheets with the waterproof side on the ground for your base ground sheet and the waterproof side for your top ground sheet facing the sky. Next, you want to spread out any creases that are on the ground sheet. Remember, the longest side of your ground sheet is the entrance. So you've got to position your entrance in line with the entrances of the other tents. Next, you want to hammer your bamboos at the center of the ground sheet entrance. Next, one person will grab the bamboo and hammer it in in the center of the longer portion of the ground sheet. This is your support for the tent. Concurrently, the other person starts to tie raffia around the four corners of the tent. How this is done? Top ringlet goes above the bottom ringlet. Raffia comes from underneath, inside, out, in again, two thumb knots. Secure. Remember, this knot is to be on the outside of the tent, facing the outside of the tent, not the inside. Once the scalp who has hit both bamboos in and the scalp who has tied all corners are done, you want to tie your center ringlet to your bamboo. How this is done? Center, center ringlet of your top ground sheet, tie thumb knot. Thumb knot done, bring it to waist level on the bamboo. Row a few times as demonstrated in the video. Clothage, and then that's done. Remember this is done simultaneously. So both scouts will be tying both sides of the tent at the same time. Once this is done, both grab one tent pack, one mallet, and proceed three steps from the middle of the bamboo. Hit your tent pack at a 45 degree angle in line with the bamboos. So your first tent pack is in line with first bamboo, second bamboo, and your second tent pack. One straight line. Once both these tent packs are hit in, you want to take your raffia from the middle, pull it together, and secure it to the tent pack. One round, two half inch. Remember, both scouts must exert an equal amount of force, or else your bamboos will not be straight and will be slanted instead. After you have tied the center of your basha, you want to proceed to the four corners of your basha. Two scouts go to opposite ends of the basha and hit the tent pack in. The position of this tent pack is five steps from your center tent pack. The tent pack must also face the center of the tent. Why this is so? Because when you pull opposite ends of the tent, you want a straight line of force acting on the tent to make it nice. Okay, once you have whacked both opposite tent packs into the ground, both scouts hold onto the raffia, tension it, one round, two half inch. Done. Next, go to the remaining corners of the basha tent, tent pack, hit in, one round, two half inch. What you need to take note of is all six of your tent packs must be in line, forming a rectangle around your basha tent. After your tent is built, you want to go to the center island of your bottom ground sheet and secure it to the bamboo pole. This 
is so that when you leave your tent to do maybe your orienteering activities, your water activities, you can raise the bottom ground sheet off ground level. This is so that when it rains, especially in our tropical Singapore and it rains a lot, water will not enter the tent from ground level. So if your area is like slightly flooding, water will not rush in. And in your tent, you put your, your bags, your equipment, your food. And these are the things that you do not want to get wet, even though you have already waterproofed it. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Next, would be securing aluminum foil onto your raffia and onto your tent bags. Put a small piece of aluminum foil, shiny side up, around the top and the bottom portion of your raffia string on all six raffia strings and cap your tent bag with a small little piece of aluminum foil, shiny side up, remember. The reason why we are doing this is so that at night, when your scouts are shining torches around the campsite, they are able to know where the tents are by the light reflecting off the aluminum foil. Thus, the scouts will not accidentally trip on your tents, collapsing the tents and maybe suffocating the inhabitants of the tents in doing so. The other reason why you want to put aluminum foil on top of your tent pack is because your tent packs are metal, they are also sharp. At night, you want them to be reflective so that no one accidentally trips on them and impales himself and bleeds out. That is not a good scenario. To make the insides of your tent even more water resistant, you want to take two clips for each side of the tent. Put the bottom ground sheet under the top ground sheet at the side. This is the side of the tent. Roll it up. After you're done rolling it up, clip it. Once you clip it, when it rains, water will flow off the sides of the tent onto the ground and not enter the tent. That is what you want. Water not entering the tent. Once you're done building your basha, remember to clear all your equipment from the areas surrounding the basha and put it on your equipment rack. For example, your mallets, if you leave it on the ground, dew or moisture from the grass will touch your mallet head, which is made of metal and cause it to rust. You do not want your mallets to rust because this is like your equipment. If it fails you during a camp, what are you going to do? Use a rock? You also do not want the mallets to be on the ground because if you trip and fall, what if your head hits the mallet? You bleed or you get a concussion. And remember, you are in the middle of the wilderness. Who is going to help you? Once you are done building the tent, be sure to clear, clean the inside of the tent because you are sleeping inside the tent. You do not want, you do not want to wake up with like mud in your hair dirt on your face. Once you have completed your basha tent construction, you will know that the top of your tent is almost perfectly straight. It will not sag. And on both diagonals of your tent, or, or if you might say, both slopes of your tent, there will be no creases or any lines. That is the ideal product from your basha tent, as you had seen earlier in the video. After camping, be sure to wash all your equipment, because equipment is precious. You do not want them to spoil or fail on you. The other thing to take note of is your tent packs and your bamboo. After you hit them in, mud will remain inside. Be sure to clear your tent packs and your bamboo of mud. Equipment care. Always remember to keep your equipment in good condition. You do not want to be sleeping halfway in the basha, looking up onto the ceiling of your tent and realize there's a giant hole and you can stare at the stars. And next, when the rain comes, it washes your face away.